Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be synthesizing ether. So this is my distillation setup. And before I begin, I just want to show you how it works. So first thing you'll notice is I'm using a hot plate as opposed to a torch like I did in my nitric acid video. And that's to eliminate the possibility of accidentally lighting the ether on fire. Because um, an open flame would pose that risk and a hot plate doesn't. Anyway, moving up, I'm going to be using a hot oil bath. I've got a thermometer to monitor temperature. I want the bath at around 135 degrees Celsius. Uh, moving up, normal distillation, and then it goes into this Erlenmeyer flask. I've got it um, surrounded by a beaker that I'm going to be packing with ice to keep it from um, evaporating as much as I can. Also, you might notice this small glass tube in the still head going into the uh, uh, reaction vessel, and that is to um, have the ether that's going to be coming down from this addition funnel go into the uh, reaction mixture as opposed to just boiling out immediately uh, over. So I'm going to be getting all of the chemicals ready and starting that in a few minutes. First step is going to be cooling down some ethanol, about 180 milliliters, and some concentrated sulfuric acid, I have 160 milliliters in a freezer uh, until the glass frosts over, so it's about zero degrees Celsius. All right, I'm going to go ahead and skip over this part while they freeze, and can get back to you once that's done. All right, so now the cold sulfuric acid has been added to the reaction vessel, and I'm going to be adding the cold uh, ethanol by means of the addition funnel. So, uh, heat has not been turned on yet, so I'll turn on the heat and start to add the ethanol. Uh, the bath will change colors to become a little bit darker due to some oxidation reduction side reactions. So if you look closely, you can see the uh, ethanol being added to the sulfuric acid. Alright, so I'm going to finish adding the ethanol. I'm going to heat the reaction vessel up to the appropriate temperature. And then start adding more uh, room temperature ethyl alcohol to make ether. So I'll get back to you once distillation starts. So now if you look closely at the reaction, you can see it appears to be off-gassing a little bit. Um, it turned a very dark black um, and boiling kind of unpredictably, so um, be sure to be careful in adding it. I'm adding it every now and then um, when, it, when the reaction slows down. So the bath, the oil bath is 145 degrees Celsius right now, uh, which is the range you want to keep it between 135 and 145. Uh, do not go above 170 degrees Celsius because ether auto-ignites at that point. Um, a little note for safety, it's a good idea to have a fire extinguisher close by because ether is really flammable and if this reaction catches on fire, you're going to want to put it out fast. Anyway, so now I'm just adding ethanol slowly um, and keeping the uh, amount of reactant in the vessel so it doesn't um, get too full. So pretty soon we should see ether start to condense down into the Erlenmeyer flask uh, because as you can see there's a little bit of off-gassing going on in the reaction. Anyway, so stay tuned. Alright, there's our first few drops of ether coming over um, pretty steadily. So it's condensing in the column. You can see, I don't know how you can see on the camera, but there's some condensing on the walls here and we're getting a little more than a drip per second down there. So, awesome, it's working. I'm just gonna keep this up. And because it's a catalyst in the reaction vessel, you can add as much ethanol as you want to make as much ether as you want. So, cool. So the reaction vessel is getting pretty full. I have a 500 mil boiling flask and um, it's getting about to the top. Now, like I said, because it's a catalyst, uh, 
the ethanol that you add will boil over as um, ether, but still you want to have a lot of extra room in your uh, boiling flask, and that's something that I would do differently if or when I do this again. Um, boiling over at the same rate, uh, a little more than a drip a second. If I add a lot of ethanol, I found, then um, a lot will boil over. So it's pretty, um, pretty responsive to how much ethanol you add, how fast you add it. Uh, temperature is steady at 140 degrees Celsius. I got up to about 148, but uh, staying about 140. So I'm just going to keep, keep adding uh, ethanol and get back to you when I'm done. Here's my product, uh, about 100 milliliters of ether and water. I could let the reaction go for longer, but um, I ran out of time. So to remove the rest of the water, what you can do is distill it again uh, at about 35 degrees Celsius. The ether will come over, leaving behind some of the water. Um, and then to get rid of that last little bit of azeotropic water, you distill with calcium chloride, and the calcium chloride bonds to the water and leaves the ether. Um, also washing it with sodium hydroxide solution, about 10% sodium hydroxide solution, will um, draw off some ether. But I don't need to do any of that because I'm just using it as a solvent to extract cinnamaldehyde. And uh, if you guys want to see my pure cinnamaldehyde, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll post a video about it. But I'm going to be using the ether as a solvent. So, thank you for watching.